Welcome to Integra Institute's Introduction to Project Risk Analysis. In this video will be part two of Schedule Risk Analysis Basics. We will take a very simple deterministic project schedule. We'll add the data that required to run the Monte Carlo simulation. We'll run the Monte Carlo simulation, then we'll take a look at the results. The results will include a histogram, a cumulative probability plot, or an S-curve and a quick sensitivity analysis. Here in a risky project, we can see that we have a very simple deterministic schedule. It has five activities, each one of five days. We can see that over in the Gantt chart with a finish start relationship. Now to quickly make it uh, compatible with the schedule risk analysis, we're going to have to add a low and a high duration plus a statistical distribution type. Now we could do this manually but if you have a very long schedule that might take a long time. So what I like to do is select the activities that I want to add the uncertainty to and select set low high duration and this dialog box will open up. And what I'm going to do is create a low and high duration for each one of the activities by multiplying it on a coefficient. So for on the bit low duration I'll uh, we'll multiply that by 0.8 and the high duration 1.5 in this. And I will also so set this statistical distribution as triangular. Now one of the things that we want to understand is it, when doing schedule risk analysis, generally we'll have data that is right skewed. That means we will have a triangular triangle that is uh, that shows us that we can improve a little, but a bit more can go wrong. So that is very typical of a schedule risk analysis. Once we've added that data, we can run the Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, just for our purposes, I'm just going to make one of the activities a bit more risky. We'll go and click the Calculate button, and we've just run 5,000 simulations. And at that point, we can go to the Analysis tab, and we're going to look at the Project Summary. And when the Project Summary we can take a quick look and up here we can see the project with and without risks. Project duration 25 days with risk. Uh, the P50 or the average is 27 and a half days. Our optimistic P10 which is a 10 percentile we have a 10 percent chance of meeting this is 25 and a quarter days and our pessimistic which is P90 uh, where we have 90% chance of meeting that date or less is 30.48 or 30 and a half days. We can see it's seen the same sort of uh, outputs with the project finish time, where we could finish on January 17th. Optimistically, well, the P50 or average, we're going to finish it on the 21st, and the pessimistic is going to finish on January 24th. We can look at the charts, we can double click the charts and get a detailed view of this, which includes on the side the statistics, their percentiles, and all of the data if we wanted to pull that out. Now, here we have a frequency chart where we can see we drag the slider across to give us again. We can look at that. It shows us that we have about a 6% chance of meeting the original target. Uh, cumulative probability again will show us the same thing, that we have about a 6% chance. Right here it says 8, but that's we're just a bit off that. Original R. And what I like to use is the combined frequency and cumul cumulative probability chart. Again, and we might want to go and take a look at what our P80, which is a good uh, measure of where we might set your, you might set your contingency at. And we can see our P80 <coughs> is around 29 and a half, let's say 30 days. I'm just going to click OK to cancel that, and we're going to take a sensitivity analysis. What the sensitivity analysis is, 
you might have heard it as a tornado chart. And what it does, it identifies for us what are the activities in the project that are driving the risk or the uncertainty in our project. And we can see in this one that as we have in task four here, that it has the most range in our from our base value, three to nine point five instead of four and seven point five. This is reflected in our sensitivity analysis. That activity number four is contributing most, 46.1, relatively most, of the uncertainty that we're seeing in the schedule. That would allow us, if we had a real project schedule, we might go to who to the uh, person involved uh, who's doing that activity or is responsible for that activity to find out why this task is uh, has so much uncertainty associated with it, and we might want to take some risk management or risk planning around that activity to try and reduce that uncertainty.